Welcome to another episode of Boxed In on Yahoo Sports. This is where we aim to settle the most essential of sports debates from the relative safety of our homes. I am Andy Behrens, one of the internet's most respected legal minds. With the NFL draft upon us, uh, our topic is timely. We're gonna settle the issue of who is the biggest draft bust of all time. That is to say, which early pick was just the biggest raging disaster of any in NFL history. I, of course, alone will decide the winner. Our esteemed counselors today, Eric Edholm, Yahoo Draft expert. Uh, he's going to be arguing against, on behalf of, I don't even know, of uh, <laughs> Akili Smith, the third overall pick by the Bengals in 99. And he's going to be opposed by Matt Harmon, Yahoo NFL uh, expert. Uh, Matt is going to be arguing on behalf of Jamarcus Russell, who really... He needs no introduction. Uh, he was the first overall pick in 2007. Purple drank. You guys know the rest. I should probably also mention that Harmon um, is just coming off a stinging loss in a recent Boxed In podcast where he drafted just a brutal Not, uh, Tiger Tiger King fantasy team. I won that. I, the, the commissioner of that one, Therese, gave me the title. So I don't. thanks for listening to the episode, Andy. But it I doesn't mean, matter what, what you think. Like, like, we don't need, like, what a fraud Therese is. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> like that whole episode was a sham. We could we could argue that John Finley, in fact, is the biggest draft bust of all time, but we don't need to go down that road. Give me a break. My first question to you both, by way of opening statement in this argument, let's just get a little bit of the background on each player. Where were they expected to go in the draft? What had they just done in their collegiate careers? Um, was it a reach pick? What did they actually do on an NFL field? Again, Matt, because you're coming off such a humiliating loss, we'll start with you. I mean, like you said, Jamarcus Russell really needs no introduction. Uh, I don't I don't really remember if people thought he was going to be a high draft pick. But I mean, it was pretty much like, oh, he can, you know, throw the ball 65 yards standing on it or like sitting on his knees or whatever uh, coming out of LSU. I do hate look, I, I will say I hate to take down another August guy because he was born on August 9th, 1985. <laughs> I hate doing that. But I mean. Yeah, I, I don't think that this was this was a rough draft. We were talking about it before we uh, started recording. It was like this draft either had like total stars, you know, Calvin Johnson, Joe Thomas, Adrian Peterson, Patrick Willis, like Hall of Fame level guys. And then, you know, the Raiders take this guy number one overall. Uh, give me a break. It was like the total. It was like Al Davis just kind of doubling down on just tools, tools, tools. And actually, I think you could probably say this is like a triple down sort of effect. So it was a mess of a pick. And uh, I don't think I don't think, I don't think this was a, I don't th again, I don't think this was a good one at home. Should we have seen the Achilles Smith debacle coming? Yeah, no, we shouldn't have seen it coming. Right. I don't think this is a player who if you had pulled the other what were there, 30 teams at the time, 20, uh, 31, maybe something like that. I think you had you per pulled the other 30 teams, Achilles Smith would have been in that. Hmm, interesting guy, one year wonder, a little bit older, 24 years old, played some professional baseball. He's actually considered a better baseball prospect than football. That may have been our first indication that he wasn't quite cut out for the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and look, the Bengals are sitting here third. If you just want to talk about it in a vacuum, this was a bad pick. But as I will display to the court, there's more than just the pick itself. It's what could have happened had they never even had the pick. Achilles Smith is a terrible football player. I would argue worse than Jamarcus Russell. But there are other circumstances I will leave till uh, later portions of the, of the program. Okay, well, that's a, that's a really good tease. Let's get to the opportunity cost of each of these picks. Matt, you, you alluded to it. There, there are some names in the 2007 draft uh, that are headed straight to Canton. Some very good names there. Uh, talk to me, both of you guys, about uh, wh what the opportunity costs were. What perhaps I think what Eric is going to get at is perhaps a trade that was that was passed up. Yeah, I mean, look, it, had they had the Bengals stuck there, here's how the 1991 or 1999 draft went. It went Tim Couch first to the 2.0 Browns, right? It made sense. Everybody thought that was going to happen. The surprise came at two. The Eagles took Donovan McNabb. And the, first of all, the Bengals were downright giddy when that happened, by the way. That's the funniest part about this whole thing. They thought, <laughs> McNabb, too. Oh my gosh. That leaves us. Kabisa Achille Maradufu Smith. That's his full name. I did look it up. So that's the worst part of it, obviously. Now, they could have taken Ricky Williams. That was the Ricky Williams draft. All the Eagles fans wanted him. They could have taken Edger and James. There were other options there, obviously. I mean, 
you know, even Dante Culpepper would have been a better pick at that spot. So put that in perspective. But the biggest thing was the trade that they turned down from the New Orleans Saints. I mean, this was essentially a better version of the trade that the Redskins ended up taking. They could have had all the Saints picks in 1999. They could have had a first (laughs) round pick in 2000. They could have had a first round pick in 2001 and a first and a second round pick in 2002. You know, I mean, you could have gotten some decent players, Brian Urlacher, Drew Brees. Some of you (laughs) may have heard of those guys. So, oh my God. I, I say that the opportunity here was greater than just the number three pick in the draft. The, the, the value lost by sitting there and taking Mr. Smith was a lot greater than your typical number three pick. Yeah, I mean, that's tough to argue. That is a that's a tough scene that uh, that, that we got there for the Bengals. <laughs> but I think I think what really makes the Russell pick so bad is when you put in context of what else was going on. I mean, again, Calvin Johnson the hall of fame type of career. He retires early, obviously with the lions. Uh, Joe Thomas is the next pick. This guy is, you know, w- one of, if not the best left tackle to ever play. And it, it is just the typical, like, I don't know how, I don't know how Al Davis was actually able to pass up a receiver like Calvin Johnson at that second right. overall pick. That is unbelievable. Or that first overall pick that is unbelievable, but he goes with this, Again, tall, toolsy quarterback coming off a, I think it was the sugar bowl MVP that year. Like, it was just such a classic bad Raiders pick that I don't even know. And, and, and like the, all the warning signs were there that he was going to be that type of bust too. And, and I think as we'll talk more, it's like it, it was just the opportunity cost of not just the players that are that were drafted around him. But this was just such a fall flat on your face type of pick that you sort of become like this was a chance for the Raiders to become legitimate. And this just further threw them back in an era where it seemed like they couldn't possibly set them back any set themselves back any harder in defense of Al Davis. I, I mean, he knew he was going to get Darius Hayward Bay like a year or two later. So <laughs> oh my God, yeah. <laughs> 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 Calvin Johnson, right? <laughs> my next question for you guys, uh, pretty simple. Was there, was there anything about these players that should have made them at all redeemable? Like did their teams, to what extent did their teams fail them or were they just, absolutely going to fail from the from the jump i think for the Bengals, you know you look back i mean they had carl pickens who was a pretty darn good receiver they had Corey dillon who ended up being a darn good running back in the nfl he was just coming along they drafted peter warwick who you know had a, f- a few good seasons before sort of just tailing out of nowhere so it wasn't like they had complete and utter trash on that team They had some pretty good offensive linemen, too, in that era as well. So to me, it was about Achilles Smith having no clue about how to play NFL football, read defenses. This is a guy who, you know, seemed like never really cared about the sport. I'm sure you could say the same about Jamarcus. But guys, don't let the purple drink sort of cloud your judgment here, okay? (laughs) You just stack up the two statistics. Russell was better when he played than Achilles Smith was when he played. Different eras, sure, whatever. They weren't that far apart. They were only about six, seven years apart. They had weapons in Cincy. Achilles didn't know how to use them. Yeah, I mean, with with Russell, obviously, like the arm strength was the the big selling point, just how physically far he could throw the ball. But this was obviously not going to work. Like, this guy, can we say it? He straight up didn't give a shit. Like, he didn't give a shit about football. <laughs> and, and, like, you know, we keep talking about purple drink. Like, this guy was, it became, like, like, he's a rapper, you know? Like, he's like Lil Wayne talking about this shit and his songs and stuff. Like, give me a break. This was, no, this was never going to work out. That was so easy to see. It doesn't matter. that. And, look, like, the worst part about Jamarcus Russell, too, like, not only did he, I mean, he never, obviously, resurfaced anywhere else in the league, didn't even come close, but, like, Look at the weirdo quarterback depth chart that he couldn't even really crack in his first year. You've got the great Josh McCown. Like, shout out to Josh McCown. He's he's still playing. Like, he played in last year's playoffs. That's unbelievable. But Dante, like, the, the corpse of Dante Culpepper, who Eric just mentioned, he's on this roster, too. You got Andrew Walter, like, that goofball. Didn't he? Is he? I, I don't know. Let's not get into Andrew Walter. But that's not the point. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this pick was never this was it was was never going to work out. It doesn't even matter that the Raiders were a clown show. This this was never going to work and it was an like, again, it was an easy to avoid situation. I mean, at least Brady Quinn, the other quarterback from this draft who was drafted in the first round and like pe- people thought he could have been the Raiders pick. At least he, he at least he found himself on a second team. 
he was uh, on the Chiefs there for for a cup of coffee. So, you know, and again, Brady's got a good media career. Brady Quinn does. And Jamarcus Russell, uh, who the hell even knows where he is? <laughs> <laughs> my final question uh, before I may, I may or may not retire to my chambers to consider this. Um, my final <laughs> question. Uh, and we'll start with uh, we'll start with Ed Holm here. If you need just one of these guys to lead a game winning drive, to lead a drive, to win you a game, who is it? I, I'm probably picking Jamarcus. You know, he had some pr- pretty good games in the NFL. Like he wasn't a good player. Let's not confuse it here. But there were at least moments where you thought to yourself, OK, you know, th- there's some kind of talent here. He played well in a game against New England in that era. I think threw for two touchdowns, no interceptions, uh, had a couple of what a high you know, bar. Yeah, right. Well, he, again, relatively speaking, if we want to compare it to some of the other uh, terrible players in that era, but still, I mean, I, you know, there were at least times where you thought he could run a little, he can move a little. He's this big guy. He was capable of, a, uh, you know, a sort of a freak play. I couldn't recall a single, like if you were to Google Achilles Smith highlights, they would simply <laughs> laugh at you. No one would ever put up a highlight film of Achilles Smith unless it was in total jest and, you know, utter uh, scorn for life and quality and all that stuff. So look, I, I just think Jamarcus was at least the better talented player, even if they're both humongous busts. I mean, talent, I guess, but like you, you're not, if you need one drive to win a game, good luck finding Jamarcus. <laughs> uh, also, can number one, he also, <laughs> didn't he, I mean, he essentially ate his way out of the league too. In addition to like not giving a damn, can he fit, he can even fit in a uniform like at this point or even in his prime? It's hard to say. And also, again, purple drank, man. This guy is going to be out of his mind buzzed on like whatever he's doing. When you need him to win a game, at least give me a guy in Achilles Smith who, you know, he's, he ran a four seven at the combine. He's he maybe he's, maybe he can maybe he can move around a little bit. I don't know. I'll tell you what, Jamarcus Russell sure as hell is not moving around. So I, I'm going to go with not Jamarcus to to win me this one game. Am I making this up? Was there not a Gus Johnson call where he compared Jamarcus Russell to Johnny U? Did that not I feel like that happened? I mean. I don't know. We, we need to find it if we do. That, that that's some that's some quality <laughs> right happen. there. Should have happened. Um, <laughs> this is tight. This is close. Um, I think that I've heard all that I need to hear. I don't. I don't even need to go to my chambers for this. Um, I think I'm prepared to render a verdict on this one. Um, which is which is uh, not to say that it isn't close. I feel like if we were to put this on the team that most badly screwed up the the team that was uh not not even just like a one year fit like i feel like the bengal's of the 90s starting with i don't know if it's the dan wilkinson draft or the kajana carter draft or whatever there's like a solid 5 year stretch there where the bengal's do everything you can possibly do wrong on draft day with like the earliest picks um the the passing on the massive Hall of trade assets from the Saints is amazing. A trade that would never be offered today or to any other time or by anyone other than the Saints in that moment. Um, it's really bad. It's damning. But like this case is about the guy, the individual who gets to, you know, he gets to package himself in in all future marketing situations as like certified by Yahoo, the biggest bust of all time in all of draft history. Like, I'm gonna come speak to your school. Hey, I'm the biggest draft bust of all time. <laughs> Yahoo says so. <laughs> I I gotta go, Jamarcus. Um, I I gotta yes. go, Jamarcus Russell here. Like I'm I'm looking at the 2007 first round right now, and it's I mean there are some bad names. True, there are some bad names. Calvin Johnson, Joe Thomas, uh, Adrian Adrian Peterson. Who who couldn't like who knew he'd be good? Like the the names on this list are like Marshawn, Patrick Willis. Darrell Rivas in middle of the first round. These are all time inner, inner circle Hall of Fame players that we knew were going to be like no question. Calvin Johnson was going to almost immediately be among the best receivers in the NFL. Same with Adrian Peterson at the running back position. What they passed on and what they got and just the ongoing legend of, of Jamarcus Russell. I got to I got to give the edge to Harmon here. Uh, should I have should I have brought up Champ Bailey and more prominently should I have talked up Tory Holt? <laughs> 
should I have extolled <laughs> the virtues of Edger and James more, the, the guy who deserves it more than anybody? You know, I guess that was my downfall right there. Good victory, though. I, I, I do appreciate it. Jamarcus was a, it was the odds were, were pretty strong. I thought that was good. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I it's all two words. Purple drank, baby. <laughs> It is quite an NFL legacy when you really think about it. When that is like the first thing that you think of when you think of a player, that's that's quite an identity. When I interviewed Jamarcus right after he was drafted, it was at the rookie symposium or whatever they call that thing out in California there. And I was able to, they said you would have seven minutes with him. That's all I was able to get. I got two and a half minutes. He smiled the whole time. He was very pleasant. But when I went back and, and replayed the recorder, which I had about, you know, I don't know, four to six inches from his face, I couldn't hear a single word. He spoke so softly. Like that was the thing that shocked me. Like he, he really talked like this the whole time. And I really, I, for my interview, I had to actually remember what he said and for transcribing purposes, cause I couldn't hear a damn thing. He said, wow. See, look yeah. at that. You stuck around for, all, for this whole podcast. You got a little nug there from Eric. A little nug. Yeah. Himself. And I've never probably used anywhere else. Right. I, for one, am shocked to learn that Jamarcus Russell couldn't command the room. That's amazing. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for joining us. This has, of course, been another episode of Boxed In. We are going to be back with new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Please make sure to subscribe to the pod. You know all the things you're supposed to do. Rate and review it. Congratulations again to Matt Harmon, who dusted himself off, got up off the mat off that horrendous Tiger King draft. He's our winner uh, today. Won that one, too. 2-0. Two 2-0, and oh. Two and oh, baby. <laughs> Not 2-0. Oh. The people don't think 2-0. Oh. That is it. We are out.